you know, the first time in my life I ever heard of this country weaponizing bugs. I must have been in junior high school and it was in a textbook and it was talking about how back in the 50s, how they were trying to weaponize insects. And I didn't even know those kind of things were going on until then. But this country has been modifying and weaponizing bugs for a very long time. And a lot of this stuff is done in labs, but how much of it has been leached out in the public? How, how much of these labs kill off these bugs after they're done experimenting on them, or do they just simply release them? I used to always wonder about that. And the only reason why I wonder is because, you know, I go out and I do gardening. And even in all the years I've been going out and gardening, I still see bugs I never seen before. You know, and I'm like, okay, what the hell is that? Ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's not like we can look at bugs and tell whether they've been modified or not, but those modified bugs are out here. I know modified mosquitoes are out here. I've been reading about that for years. So, you know, it makes you wonder. So there's an article that came out in The Guardian on July 16th, 2019, House ordered Pentagon to review if exposed Americans to weaponized ticks. And it is a New Jersey lawmaker that had suggested making, you know, these insects into bioweapons, you know, to use against enemies. Okay, so... Okay, so now they modify these bugs. How many of these bugs actually end up out in the public? We don't know. It's not like they tell us anything like this. So U.S. House of Representatives had called for an investigation into whether the spread of Lyme disease had its roots in a Pentagon experiment in weaponizing ticks. The House approved amendment proposed by a Republican congressman from New Jersey, Chris Smith, instructing the Defense Department's Inspector General to conduct a review of whether the U.S. experimented with ticks and other insects regarding use as a biological weapon between uh, 1950 and 1975. So that's a 25-year span. The review would have assessed the scope of the experiment and whether any ticks or insects used in such experiment were released outside of any laboratory by accident or experiment design. The amendment was approved by a voice vote in the House and add it to a defense spending bill, but the bill still has to be re, uh, reconciled with a Senate version. Smith said the amendment was inspired by a number of books and articles suggesting that significant research had been done at U.S. government facilities, including Fort Detrick, Maryland, and Plum Island, New York, to turn ticks and other insects into bioweapons. A new book published in May by a Stanford University science writer and former Lyme sufferer, Chris Newby, has raised questions about the origins of that disease. And you know what? He raises a good question. You know, do you think some of these diseases that come from bugs are natural? I don't think they all are. I really don't. Okay, so 
that's that's a really interesting um point to raise which affects 400,000 Americans each year you know I have to think about that because you know I actually knew someone that got Lyme disease and I never thought about the fact that it might not even be natural I never thought about it you know Ah, okay. Uh, Bitten, the secret history of Lyme disease and biological weapons. Cite, the Swiss-born discoverer of the Lyme pathogen, Willie Bergdorfer, as saying that the Lyme epidemic was a military experiment that had gone wrong. Wow. Oh my goodness, I never thought about that. I never thought about Lyme disease not being natural, y'all. But it makes you wonder, you know, how many of these blood-sucking bugs out here are spreading diseases because they are, like they said in this article, an experiment that went wrong. Wow. Wow. Bergdorfer, who died in 2014, worked as a bioweapons researcher for the U.S. military and said he was tasked with breeding fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, and other blood-sucking insects and affecting them with pathogens that cause human disease. According to the book, there were programs to drop weaponized ticks and other bugs from the air and that unaffected bugs were released in residential areas in the U.S. to trace how they spread. It suggests that such a scheme could have gone awry and led to the eruption of Lyme disease in the U.S. in the 1960s. Wow. I knew someone in childhood that had Lyme disease. And it was at a time when you just didn't hear about a lot of people having it. But this person had it. And wow. You know, it, it just makes me wonder how many of these other things out here that come from bugs that really isn't a natural disease at all. If Lyme disease is not natural, many of the other diseases from bugs are probably not natural either. Ooh, they do so many evil things in this country. And then you're going to unleash that in residential areas or somebody makes a, a mistake, an accident, and these bugs end up out here in the public. It is too much of a risk with some of these people that are just not careful enough, you know. And who suffers at the end of the day? The people that live out in the public. But y'all, some years I see... All kinds of things that I just, I never seen in my state before. You know, but one thing I haven't seen all year, and it's because we had such a harsh winter. I haven't seen any of them stink bugs. I haven't seen one this year. Um, and I remember after we had went down to, I think we went down to nine degrees. And they said all of the cold Temperatures from the polar vortex we had probably killed off 98% of all of the stink bugs. And I think it's true. I haven't seen one this entire season in my state. Not one. But please tell me what you think, y'all. This is, this is scary. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on 
the next video. Peace, family.